Uh, good afternoon to all South Africans at home or wherever you are watching through live streaming, radio, listening to the radio. Today we have a, a briefing by Minister Kubai on tourism. May we allow the minister to update the nation. We are still on level three of lockdown. Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Dazana Balwe. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Since the country entered level three of risk-adjusted strategy, the tourism sector also began its march towards full operation. The reality of COVID-19 pandemic and the fluctuation, <coughs> sorry, the fluctuating risk of the virus, virus spread has dictated that we pace ourselves in our efforts to reopen the sector. However, we believe that so far, one step at a time, we are walking in the right direction. The impact of the pandemic has been devastating for the tourism sector. Many businesses are at the risk of being lost and closed, and many jobs have either been lost or at the risk of being lost. However, we are doing everything we can to ensure that the impact of COVID-19 to the tourism sector is minimized. <clears throat> Over the last four months, we've had to work hard in partnership with the private sector to develop health and safety protocols and find innovation, innovative ways for the early reopening of the sector. Successive discussions with the industry representatives of stringent preventative protocols and guidelines for the tourism sector yielded results. Along the way, with various subsectors and activities opening under level three and level four. This included restaurants, accommodation establishments, casinos, hiking, self drives, and game farms, and professional services. Domestic travel for business purposes was also allowed as of June the 1st. Following discussions about the current risk level, the National Command Council, the National Coronavirus Command Council recommended to Cabinet for some restrictions to be eased to allow more tourist activities to open. Sorry, tourism activities to reopen. Cabinet has approved the following. Under restaurants, in our recent discussions with the restaurant sector, two issues were raised with regards to the current regulations. One was crippling effect of the nine o'clock curfew to the restaurant business operation. And the second one was the issue of alcohol sale. To comply with the current curfew regulations, restaurants are unable to serve dinner to their customers, which means that they are unable to operate at peak time of their business day. In response to this challenge, Cabinet has agreed to move the curfew to start at 10 o'clock p.m. to allow for uninterrupted dinner services at restaurants. We believe that this change will go a long way towards increasing their revenue generation. The sale of alcohol remains prohibited, unfortunately, to my restaurant sector. That's the feedback. On accommodation for leisure, Cabinet has also agreed to ease the restriction around leisure travel. Currently, individuals are not allowed to leave their homes for leisure purposes. After the release of the new regulations, individuals will be permitted to leave their homes for leisure purposes within their provinces where they currently live. Let me emphasize this. It is only for intra-provincial travel, not intra, inter-provincial. It's intra, not inter. So it's within your province. If you are in Gauteng, you are allowed to be within Gauteng. You don't go to KZN. If you are in KZN, you don't go to Gauteng. That's what it means. Individuals are, not, are still not permitted to travel between provinces for leisure purposes. Accordingly, this change has implications for accommodation facilities that are permitted to operate under level three. No more in terms of the directions that we will be issuing once the regulations have been published. It will be in, expected that within the accommodation will comply with no more than two persons 
per room except for a nuclear family. This means a parent or two parents with children. Establishments are already legally obliged to require and keep a record of proof of identity, and this shall be expected even for leisure accommodation. Short-term home rental sharing remains closed. It's not yet allowed. Under tour operators, in the new regulations, the tour operators will be allowed to conduct guided tours in open safari vehicles subject to directions and includes provisions for both social distancing and maximum ventilation. These changes will come into effect immediately as soon as the new regulations have been gazetted and published. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, with, we have had we have been having several and regular interactions with various stakeholders. These interactions, which are almost on a weekly basis, have helped us to gather inputs from all stakeholders on how best to reopen the sector and support the recovery going forward. I must indicate these interactions are at a ministerial level. So it is the minister with the delegation that meets various sectors and individuals weekly in order to ensure that we remain constantly in touch with the sector and having engagements with the sector. While other activities continue from officials and including our entity and the discussions that are led by both the board and also our tourism, uh, our South African tourism entity leadership, executive leadership. These interactions have also helped to share information regarding how our government is managing the pandemic. Going forward, we will invite health practitioners who are advising government on how best to manage the pandemic to meet with our sector so that together we can strategize on the way forward. We are armed with all so that we are armed with all the necessary information when we take various decisions about our sector for the future. We have also agreed to formalize our working relationship with the sector player through a formation of a task team that brings together a broad spectrum of private sector players and officials from the department to work towards reopening the sector and resolving other sector challenges. This will include, as I said in my budget vote, together with working with the sector, having norms and standards published by end of August for the sector for international market to feel safe that they can visit South Africa when the borders open because it will be safe for them to do so. Under relief and response measures, in supporting the tourism sector in this crisis period, the Department of Tourism redirected 200 million through the Tourism Relief Fund. Of the 7,284 valid applications submitted, our resources could only assist 4,000 businesses in the tourism and hospitality sector. Allocation of funds was conducted in line with government policies and ensured that there was equitable share of the resources across all regions of the country, including rural areas and small towns and small dorpies. We are encouraged by the many letters of appreciation from patriotic South Africans, both black and white, who did not listen to the misleading noise that the relief fund was specifically for black people. This unfortunate and untimely confusing unfortunately discouraged some who even those that qualified to apply for the grant. I need to give a total breakdown of how we distributed the fund according to provinces. For the Eastern Cape we were able to pay 457 companies, Free State 134 companies, Gauteng 1017 companies, KwaZulu Natal 607 companies, Limpopo 294 companies, Mpumalanga 238 companies, Northwest 162 companies, Northern Cape 124 companies, Western Cape 967 companies. This brings to all 4,000 companies that have been uh, allocated and given the grant. We regret that a total of 3,284 applications were not funded due to various reasons. The first one being depletion of the resources, despite the fact that some qualified.
Reasons for non-approval non range from enterprises with an annual turnover of 5 million and above. This means those who do not qualify in terms of the criteria because we have said that we are looking for businesses that their turnover per annum is 5,000 and below. Non-tourist tourism enterprises that applied as well. Enterprises not covered under TRF guidelines like franchising restaurants, we didn't cover this. Applications with outstanding mandatory documents such as valid tax um, certificates, we do not as well, do not qualify or any supporting documents. So we had various reasons and all the letters that deal, details the reasons for unfavorable considerations have been prepared and are being distributed to various uh, applicants. On the relief fund for tourist, tourism guides, tourist guides, a month ago I announced that we have set aside 30 million to provide financial relief for freelance tourist guides over a period of two to three months. The processing of payments has taken longer due to some province, provincial offices closing down after they had positive cases of COVID-19. You'd understand that we utilized our registrars in provinces to gather information and verify the individual that needed to be paid. We have since received a list of 9,380 tourist guides from the provinces. It has come to our attention that some of the tour guides are registered with UIF. To avoid double dipping, we have initiated a verification process to ensure that only those who are not receiving income will be benefiting from this. The first batch of payment of 1,378 verified eligible beneficiaries have been made today. The second batch will be paid upon completion of the verification process. The verification process is expected to be completed tomorrow. So once we have done that, verified that there is no double tipping, those individuals as well will be paid. But the 1,378 tourist guides, as they start going back to work, they will be able to have the support so that they can start performing their duties. Other government relief measures. In addition, we welcome the decision by Minister of Finance to review and change the qualifying criteria for the 200 billion rent COVID-19 loan guarantee scheme so that more businesses can gain access to the funds. We encourage businesses in our sector to exploit this opportunity. Similarly, we welcome the announcement by Minister Nglesi of the extension of the temporary employer-employee relief scheme until the 15th of August. This will definitely go a long way for many businesses and employees in our sector. I need to indicate, ladies and gentlemen, that the Department of Tourism has started working on the recovery plan for our sector. In the past three months, we have been working on developing a tourism recovery strategy. In this regard, the CEO of SAT working with a team from the department have been gathering inputs from the sector through a series of webinars, some which I personally participated and also received written inputs from the sector players. This work has culminated into a draft tourism recovery plan document. Let me take this opportunity to thank the team that worked hard to produce this document. The South African Tourism CEO, Mr. Sisan Jona, and his team, and the team from the department led by the DDG, Anami Malan, who worked around the clock to ensure that this document is finalized. In light of in light of every involving COVID-19 situation, I have decided to release the draft plan for further consultation to all stakeholders and the general public before we finalize for submission to Cabinet. The window for making inputs will start on the 1st of August 2020 when I release the document until the 15th of August 2020. Inputs can be, the document will be find, found on our website and inputs can be sent to recovery at tourism.gov.za which will be available on our website as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here on the eve of Women's Month. Throughout the coming month, there will be strong focus on various challenges that women in our country are facing, including the important issue of gender mainstreaming. Gender-based violence remains a big challenge which our society must confront. Moreover, the issue of gender equality remains a thorn in the various sectors of the economy, including the tourism sector.
As a woman leader in the tourism sector, I call on all women who are part of the tourism to draw inspiration from women such as Mama Winnie Mandela, Mama Lillian Goy, Charlotte Matleke, Albert Sisulu and others on whose shoulders I stand today and continue the fight for increased women participation in the sector and in the economy in general. As we work towards the recovery, let us ensure that we build a sector that embraces women as equal capable economic actors, a sector that is not inclusive. The sector that is not inclusive is not a sustainable sector. We stand, we understand that these are extremely difficult times for our sector. However, we believe that this situation demands that we work together to weather the storm going forward. As government, we continue to be seized with finding stability and solutions as we traverse the turbulences. Let us protect ourselves, let's wear our masks, let's wash our hands, and let's continue to practice social distancing. In this way, as we work together, we will fight and we will win the battle against COVID-19. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister. That was the uh, speech by Minister Mamuluko Kubai Ngubani, our Minister of Tourism in the Republic of South Africa. She was uh, relating the activities under COVID-19 risk adjustment level 3 and the response measures that they have put. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Also, the last closing part that she said, let us make sure that we we observe all the precautions that are there in the protocols of social distancing, washing of our hands and also our mask. Maybe let me check first if there are questions on the telephone line. Um, our media colleagues or journalists have the number that they can use to ask questions. Can I check first, Jabu, if we have any uh, questions on the landline? Thank you, Chair. There's no at the moment. Thank you very much. Can we check if we have questions on on the WhatsApp, Tagalani? No, no thanks. We do have uh, questions on WhatsApp. And our first question is from uh, Anwait Slabet from Rapport. And the question is, uh, under what conditions will home sharing like Airbnb uh, be allowed again? And the second question is from Bwanga Lulani from EWN. And the question is depletion of funds. The minister, when over 3,000 companies have not been uh, given relief, where does uh, this uh, leave them? And uh, we, we also uh, uh, we have uh, another question uh, from uh, Richard, who is from my Dopey Media. And the question is, uh, when will the regulation changes as announced be published? That's what we have for now. Thanks. Thank you very much. Minister, the three questions uh, that have been asked so far, you will give us a uh, direction on uh, taking them, all of them, or you share them. Thank you. My apologies, I did not introduce the Director General earlier on. Um, I'm with the Director General of the Department of Tourism, Mr. Victor Tarak. Um, currently, what we do, we normally don't go publicly to say this is what will happen. So what happens is that in terms of the home sharing, there are concerns that are raised by the health practitioners in terms of the homes, um, whereby people are... Um, going to be visiting homes and sharing and all those things. What we have done already, we have had meetings with the teams um, that relates, for example, we had a meeting with a group from Airbnb. We've gone through the discussions. There is a process that we've put in place between ourselves and their team. We're going through their protocols. Um, they've submitted, so we've given them a point of reference in the 
department to interact with once we are satisfied and they, we can be able to take those to the health teams we'll take them and then we'll announce when the time comes we do not have um, specific requirements uh, as such uh, for home sharing as we say we learning as we go in terms of the pandemic we look at what global practices are and we deal with it as, as such. So there are concerns that were raised by the health teams about sharing and the vulnerability of our communities. And those things need to be taken into consideration before we can even say we're taking the matter to NCCC. So once the process has been done, we'll, I do assure the people who are, for example, that you're talking about, that the, their matter is on our table. We have met with Airbnb that says to us they've got quite a number of people who are registered under their list and others might not be registered under Airbnb but do home sharing do a home establishment that they rent out so the, those are not yet opened so when the time comes we'll do that yes indeed as I said even at the beginning when we issued um, the, the relief fund we did ensure a uh, indicate that we can only be able to provide the fund for three for four thousand um, companies we did expect that many will apply who would not um, get the money uh, and that's why part of the strategy for us is to work together with the sector to get the health protocols in place and get the establishments opening because we think that's the most sustainable way because the relief fund comes but it doesn't go a long way whereas when a business is running they are able to get um, more um, sustainability and more funds for themselves I'm not so sure if I answered the last one Oh, the issue of the regulations, they are still being worked on because we had committed to the sector, especially the restaurants and um, the accommodation, that once a decision is taken, we will announce so that they can start doing the preparations. So we are hoping that um, in the coming few days, we'll be able to see the regulations coming out. I would not be able to give the exact date for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Minister, once the regulations are ready, they will be communicated. Minister, through the platforms that we normally communicate with the uh, media, but also with the entire uh, population. Can I check if we have uh, the last round of questions before we can uh, release the minister? Let me check uh, first on the telephone. Thank you, Chair. I have uh, Mika from Citizen on the line. Mika, you can ask your questions to the Minister. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, I wanted to know, wildlife management is listed as an essential services, but interprovincial travel for hunters is banned. Um, hunting activities are seen as a leisure activity and not as a way to manage wildlife. How do we bridge this gap? Thank you very much. Do we have another caller? No, thank you very much. Let us check on the WhatsApp lines. Do you have any questions, no, Tagalani? Thanks, Chair. Uh, we have uh, Charlotte from EWN who is asking a follow-up question from uh, Wonga's question. He's asking the minister if the minister uh, will be approaching Treasury for further funding uh, to bridge uh, the gap, especially given the level of employment tourism provides. And we have Stembilet from Sunday Times. And the question is, in terms of the curfew, people might finish their meals uh, and leave the restaurant uh, at 10. And they still need to get home. The staff of the restaurant also needs to clean up and prepare for the, ne uh, for the next day. How did uh, you decide uh, on the one-hour extension uh, of curfew? And they have restaurants uh, committed to assisting with transport uh, of staff. And we have uh, Angelo uh, Coppola from CGTN. And the question will, uh, is uh, when will cross-provincial leisure travel uh, be allowed? And we have uh, Christian Duplessis from Netfer24. Uh, and the question is um, uh, when will uh, the new regulations uh, be published? 
and we have uh, Nadia again from Network 24 and the question is we received information from the Restaurant Association that a proposal was given to government regarding permits uh, for the consuming of alcohol in restaurants. Do you have any feedback uh, on that proposal? And Wonga Tlulani is coming again from EWN. Said Minister, in terms of the uh, permanent damage uh, to the industry, uh, how bad do you anticipate it uh, uh, to, uh, to me particularly that tourism contributes uh, to GDP? And, uh, how, many, how many do you still have? I, I have uh, two. Two. Maybe we can take them in the next round, or Minister, should we take them? Not I'll read them. Yeah, another question from uh, uh, Richard from uh, Dopi Media. Uh, the, the question is, can the minister please clarify that according to existing regulations, restaurant staff can travel home after uh, the cafe with permits uh, so that the restaurants can actually close uh, to patrons at 10 p.m. And we have uh, Helen Ilof uh, from Kexton Local Media. And the question the minister says that interprovincial travel has not been allowed for leisure purposes until today. Yet the regulations published in the last week of June specifically uh, permitted it, uh, kindly confirm for record purposes. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much, um, Minister. I think the tissue will start and come in. Then we'll start first with the Director General of the Department of Tourism, DG. Thank you, Tarabella. Um, my... The, the, the issue of interprovincial travel it is not yet permitted. Um, I would, I would, I would recommend that the question with regards to wildlife management be directed to the relevant authorities. Uh, we, we, we are not directly responsible for that. So that, that's what I would recommend to the minister. The <clears throat> issue of uh, want people. Uh, eat and then after eating, um, leave only at 10 o'clock and so on. The submission we received from the industry was that dinner is normally served around 8 o'clock. So by around 9, people have already eaten um, and people would then be leaving to go home and so on. So that's why they actually specifically requested for this one hour and that one hour was then granted so we don't foresee uh, that people are going to come and uh, extend that hour to yet another uh, hour or yet two hours more and so on it would be that specific hour and once they've eaten then they would leave it means that by 10 o'clock all of us would have to be at home that's what the KFU actually still says. We would still have to be at home at 10 o'clock. If you do have a permit uh, after working late and so on, that would then be permissible for you to be able to then uh, take your, 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 your mode of transport uh, back to your, to your place of residence. The <coughs> issue about alcohol, uh, I think... The feedback has been given. If I got the question right, the question says the Restaurants Association of South Africa says that it had made a submission and that submission was that alcohol should be permitted. And what is the feedback? The feedback is that that uh, request was not uh, granted. So as Minister said, unfortunately, we did not get that one. Uh, what we got is, is the curfew. The last one <clears throat> that uh, we would like to also just reflect on is uh, interprovincial leisure. Um, they, they, there was no indication of interprovincial leisure that was going to take place in the previous regulations. There has not been any interprovincial leisure that was actually permitted even before. In fact, in the past, uh, leisure that was permitted 
was self-drive um, in in game uh, reserves and uh, and game parks, and and that was done. Um, for 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 the very first 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 uh, opening within level three, but other than that, uh, there hasn't been any leisure travel that has been permitted. Thank you. Okay, let me speak to something else. Thank you, DG Minister. Thanks, DG. I think quite a number of issues have been raised, um, has been responded to. Let me just pick about the issues of um, the resources and the difficulties in terms of financial support. One of the things that we've got to remember is that even in government, the financial, the fiscal, the fiscal is constrained. Um, if you look at our department budget currently, um, we've had to have a cut of almost 50%. Um, because we do quite a lot of marketing issues. When we took the money from um, for tourism relief, for example, we took that money from um, what you would get as market access. Access because we do not have exhibition and conferencing that would take small businesses to travel and um, sell their products to. So currently, um, if you say the minister is going, if you are asking, the minister is going to approach Treasury. We just finalized the budget. We have approved the budget yesterday. So whatever that we do as the Department of Tourism has to be within the budget that is already allocated to us. Then we can have a conversation with the Minister of Finance in the next round of budget cycle, because budget has a cycle. So this cycle has been closed. Discussions are closed. We'll be able to engage with the Minister of Finance in terms of the next round of activities, especially for us when we go to that round, we'll be looking at financing our recovery plan. Financing of the recovery plan will involve that we have to protect the places, meaning that um, one of the things that we have to do is make sure that when we say want to open, the places where tourists are visiting are still existing and uh, are in, in good shape. The second area will be around, because you understand that we've spoken and this, when colleagues read, our recovery will talk about even more emphasizing on the domestic market because we do believe that once we are able to manage the pandemic that's why all of us as South Africans we must work together to ensure that uh, we manage the pandemic because the time where we are comfortable and government is able to say we can go to various provinces. We know many of us, like me, I have family and friends in Limpopo. I would want to go to Limpopo. In that way, I'm a tourist because I fall under the VFR, visiting friends and family. Either in Limpopo, either in Western Cape, either in KZN, I, commun I become part of that. So we're looking at that mainly, that many of the people have been tired of being in their houses, when tourism activities fully open, we'll be able to see many people leaving and going out. I know many South Africans are looking forward to that, but until then, fellow South Africans, as the president always say, let's stay safe. Let's stay home. Let's make sure that we support government in the efforts to fight COVID-19. It is an aggressive disease. It disrupts, it has disrupted us, it has disrupted our sector. We had huge plans for the sector. Unbeknowing to us, unbeknown to us, it disrupted us. All we had to do over the past months is to learn its trend, its learn, learn how it conducts itself, and also learn how to adapt. So until then, as I say, we shall travel, but for us to travel tomorrow, we have to stay safe today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. I think the explanation has been quite uh, clear and well received. But can I quickly make a check of if we have uh, the last uh, round of questions from radio? I can see we are fine. We don't have any questions. Do we have any, the last ones, maybe on, on WhatsApp? That will be the last ones, TK. Yes, we, we have uh, Jana Chent from ARD, uh, German Radio. And he said, uh, may I ask uh, the, the minister, 
uh, uh, this question and the question is is the is it foreseeable when international tourists will possibly be allowed to enter south africa again thanks Thank you very much, uh, Minister. This was the very last uh, question that we we take, and uh, we'll request the Minister to answer it, and uh, we'll then uh, call it a day, Minister. Um, South Africa adopted a risk-adjusted approach strategy. What it means is that you look at, you evaluate the risk. When the risk is higher, um, or yeah, when the risk is higher, then you put restriction to contain the risk. When the risk is low, you release and put lesser restrictions. Now we've opted not to have dates as government to say on this date this is what will happen, on this date this is what will happen. It's precisely because, as I said earlier on, the pandemic is unpredictable. We can have predictions as tourism, which I've learned to be a bit conservative about, because previously I did indicate what was our predictions and we got ourselves into trouble. So we'd want to stay away from predicting when will the borders open, but rely on all of us with South Africans to work together to ensure that we contain the pandemic. Second issue that we'll do is also to engage in our international markets. What concerns us currently as the tourism portfolio is us being put as high risk by other countries. So I'm happy that it's a German radio. One of the countries that has put us as high risk is Germany and would want to work hard to engage them so that they can remove us from the high risk. And obviously it's based on the numbers. We have to drop the numbers. They have to be comfortable about what we are doing. But we are working Part of our strategy of recovery is to engage various countries where our source markets are to be able to say, can we find a way of giving you comfort so that you can bring that you can allow the tourists to come to South Africa and not put us in a high risk. The other issue that I spoke about earlier on was on the norms and standards where we are going to publish the norms and standards so that any tourist coming from international market would know that when I go to South Africa, I will be safe. So for now, we do not have the time. As I said previously, we're taking this one step at a time. The first step would be for us to see our domestic tourism becoming fully to life. Once we see that, we would know that chances and closer we have become to seeing our borders being opened. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the Minister of Tourism in the Republic of South Africa, Minister Kubai Ngubani. Minister, we thank you very much. Uh, we will repeat the words of government and the message always let's make sure that uh, we keep safe social distance let's wash our hands with soap and sanitize and let's keep our masks on thank you very much and thank you minister thank you. right the department of tourism briefing the media there just some highlights from what came out of that